It's the grand finale of the Tastemaster SA. Engage with us throughout the show using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Bake more memories with Royal Baking Powder. Previously on the semi-final, the top four contestants had to produce their very own harvest table using nothing but open coals and wood-fired ovens. After putting forward an impressive display, it was Kyle who won the mastery pin, and sadly for Nobile, it was the end of the road. Welcome back to the Taste Master Kitchen. We started this journey with 12 talented bakers. But time and time again, the three of you have proven that you definitely belong here. Today's challenge will push you to your limits and it will call upon all the skills that you've mastered throughout this competition. And at the end of it all, only one of you will be crowned the taste master. Right, time for today's challenge and our guest judge. She is one of South Africa's most prolific chefs, has worked in a number of Michelin star restaurants in Europe, as well as some of South Africa's best. She is currently the executive chef at Hazendal Wine Estate, where they serve a very unique culinary experience, which is the theme of today's challenge. Dating back more than 300 years, the estate is rich in history and has introduced a Russian tea ceremony created by a team of chefs led by Michel Turon. I'm Michelle Turan. I'm the executive chef at Hazendal Wine Estate. I've been in the industry for just over 20 years. My love for baking and all things food started from a really very young age. For me it was about seeing people enjoying what you make, even though you weren't very good at it <laughs> from the beginning, but for me it's all about entertaining, um, being creative, seeing something, getting an idea and then putting my own spin on it. So that's basically where it all started for me. I spent some time overseas as well, which also helped me to think creatively and also to run my kitchen teams the way I do at the moment. There's no better way for the contestants to show their skills today than actually doing a high tea with all the different elements from small to big, from savory to sweet, to show all of their skills needed to execute the best possible tea ceremony. A high tea is something that shows skill, it's very dainty, it shows a lot of your own personality. So it's done widely across the whole of the world where people enjoy tea with either sweet and savory treats. So it's interesting to see how different cultures do it. Here at Hazendal we do the Russian inspired one. So it's going to be interesting to see people's take on that. The whole idea of the Russian tea ceremony is also to kind of educate people on how the Russians do it. So there's a lot of stories to be told regarding each of the elements that we do. We also showcase South African produce along with the Russian recipes, which makes it quite interesting. I would like to see their own spin and take on what we do, to see a bit about their backgrounds, their stories that they grew up with, with bakes and tea cakes with their grandmother or with their, with their parents and see what, what they can put forward today, using all of the skills and the techniques that they've learned along the way. Let's welcome Michelle Terron. Oh, I'm so excited. Michelle is a really talented chef and her pastry chef is just as talented, so I'm really excited to get this going. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us in the Taste Master Kitchen. Thank you so much. Hi guys, I'm so excited for you for making it to the final. Well done. This is not your ordinary tea and cake presentation. This is a Russian tea ceremony. For today's challenge, you need to create a Russian-inspired high tea experience, but with your own South African twist. Okay, I can do that. It's exciting. I'm glad that we get to bring some South African flavors. Your presentation needs to include at least five items, enough to serve 12 people, and you need to incorporate the key components of a Russian tea ceremony. These are honey, beetroot, mushroom, and salmon trout. How you incorporate these is up to you entirely. I think those are great ingredients. From a South African point of view, those are ingredients that we all use and love, so that shouldn't be a challenge. For this bake, you'll have five hours in the Taste Master Kitchen to prepare all your items. At your stations, you'll notice you have a cooler box. That's because you will not be presenting your high tea experience here. Surprise upon surprise upon surprise. <laughs> I mean, it is the final. That's right, when your five hours are done, you will have to pack up and transport all your prepped items to Hazendal Wine Estate, at which point you will get a further 90 minutes to finalize and plate your high tea experience. 
box all our stuff, cook all our bags in five hours. Okay, now the pressure's on, it's on. This is actually such a beautiful presentation of Russian and South African hospitality coming together. What we've done is we've taken a lot of the Russian recipes and we've actually kind of combined them with South African flavor, South African produce to bring what you see here today on the spread. Basically what you see on these plates is sweet and savory items. What you'll see is savories like piroshki, which is a little pie. We've got a blini, we've got a uladi, which is basically just what the salmon is served on. The skill level is just, it's intense. The tea is traditionally served not with sugar, it's served with jam just because sugar wasn't really available um, in those times, but it also gives you an idea of what else you can do with jam, not only serving it with the tea, but also using it in your bakes as well. This is totally left field for me because it's not the usual standard tea fair that you get in South Africa. There's so many different elements, so many ways of doing things, so many confusing names, but I mean, like, this is something totally new, so I'm super keen for the day. Okay guys, so all of the hard work with this guy has already been done. So we've got a plus minus 13 to 15 layers of the honey cake biscuit, as well as the honey cream filling that we're doing for this specific cake. So basically what we've done is we've baked the biscuit all around, you get everything ready and then you start building. We've got a plain cake ring, you just slightly press down to pull that guy off and I think you can already see the layers happening there. I'm so excited for the tips that Michelle is giving us today because she looks like she means business. So here we will see, this is the leftover honey cake that has not been soaked. You crumb it up, you can either put it on the top and this is where your creativity comes in. Also some extra honey cake that we saved and just cut our chart to make it look good. Again, you will use your own initiative on how you would like to do things. Because of the honey theme, obviously we have some beautiful bubbly honeycomb as well. We did some chocolate tempering as well. I've got white chocolate here that looks like honeycomb. And then we also decided to do some beautiful isomalt garnishes, which you all probably have worked with before, and gave it some color just to give it a little bit of a, all going in the yellows and the browns. And there we go, beautiful Russian honey cake. I came to experience new cuisines, new ways of baking. And I am so, so overwhelmed, but I'm really keen to get into the nitty gritties of what she's presented. Michelle, I see you've got a potato salad on your plate and it's quite unusual. Well, potato salad is not only big for South Africans with a braai, actually. This is one of the most famous Russian salad. It's actually called an olivier salad, which is potatoes, peas, carrots, and then a mayo base. How long do we need to wait until we start eating all of this? <laughs> Michelle, when it comes to high teas, how do you incorporate something as big as that apple cake into something a little bit more refined to then have on this beautiful plate? A high tea is something that is refined, so we decided to use our own skill sets and mm -hmm. creativity to see how we could put a tea together or a tea plate together by making everything in bite-sized or smaller portions. And this is what we came up with. Now it's the fun part, now I get to taste. I'm actually starting to feel a bit frazzled yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be a crazy one today. Michelle really knows what she's doing with this tea. I mean, we are tasting all the different elements, the savouries, her pies, like every single element is well thought out and the flavor is just coming through everywhere. It's so refined. I've never tasted flavors like that. My mind is blown. Everything tastes so beautiful. The textures are there, the colors are there, and it's all things that I haven't experienced before, so that is a real treat. Well, that was absolutely delicious. Thank you, Michelle. Guys, each of you have been provided with a Samsung tablet to research and plan your ideas. Best to get started, as the title of the Taste Master is on the line. The, the Samsung tablet is absolutely great. You can go between sketching to typing on the keyboard. You're able to multitask very nicely on the Samsung tab. So I'm always happy to use it for planning. I'm thinking our ceremonies that we have, there's always those standard foods we have, like you know you're gonna get a chakalaka, or you know you're gonna get like nyama and draw with it. So I'm trying to think of ways where I can sort of change it up and switch how they're usually done. My plan is to keep it quite simple. I'm gonna do traditional South African bakes and then I'm gonna give them Russian twists and then with the savories, I might go the other way. I'm thinking about the top things that I would probably serve my family if we were to have IT. Up next, the final challenge begins. Who do you think will create the winning bake? 
Let us know using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Feeling inspired to create your own high tea? Stand the chance of winning a Le Creuset baking hamper. Plus, go into the draw for the grand viewer prize of the Thermomix TM6 Smart Connected Cooking Appliance. To enter, create a bake using Royal Baking Powder. Take a pick of your creation with the product and reply to the competition posts on our social media pages with hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Entries close at midnight this Sunday, 5th December. You're watching the Russian high tea inspired season finale of the Tastemaster SA. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. This is the grand finale. Today, you are baking for the title of the Tastemaster SA. And along with this title, you'll be walking away with more than 90,000 rands worth of prizes. The pantry today has some unique Russian-inspired ingredients provided by Michelle and her team. Are you ready to bake more memories? Yeah, yeah woohoo! <laughs> Your time starts in... Three, two, two one, get, get baking! baking. My head started spinning out of control. I'm starting to doubt my plan. I'm starting to think maybe I should add some more stuff. I realize I have to have a plan today. So what I'm going to do is start with my big bags first and then all the small things, all the nitty gritty, I'm going to leave until about the end. Hi, Kyle. What's happening here on your chef. side? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a peppermint crisp mousse and then I'm going to set um, those edible pearls on top and put them into little cans so they can be like cans of caviar but in like a mousse. OK, and Kyle. And then the second thing is I'm going to do some brownies and then incorporate some Russian and some South African flavors into that as well. And then I have another idea of like the um, Amber Room in Russia. So that's mm -hmm. like one of the, like the lost heritage sites in the art world and do some dessert with some sugar as well. So bring the amber colors into that for my third dessert. Wow, showing off all your skills, hey? Like the art coming through, yeah, that's yeah. very, very that, nice. That's what I'm excited about. So let's see if I get done and can pull it off. So I'm making it's a traditional juice called khemer. It's basically like ginger kind of juice that we have at all our ceremonies, whatever, like the non-alcoholic people, this is what they come for. Okay, tell us what is going to be on your high tea. So look, I took four things that really resonate with me that are totally South African and I'm going to flip it on its head mm -hmm. and hopefully make it more fine dining. So I've got a milk tart, the malva, the mosbolikis, and the last one that I can't think oh. of right now. <laughs> Oh, a pap tart. Ah, oh, OK. Yes, so I'm going to zhuzh it up a bit today. So that's your savoury element? Yes. Oh, lovely. Yeah. I'd like to think that I make really good brownies. So what I'm doing is I'm baking a traditional rich chocolate brownie. And in the centre, I'm going to pipe in this beautiful milk tart cremeau that I've made and I've infused it with vodka. And there's my Russian element. Talk us through what your high tea inspiration is. So basically, I'm going with what we have Yitu when we have ceremonies and all of that. So I'm just refining those. I'm going to have like salmon croquets with a garlic aioli. I think I'm making like a spinach roulade with the salmon. And like just take home things that you, I know I'll find at home and just refine them. I mean, I love the sound of everything because it, no. it speaks to my heritage. <laughs> and you know, I love that. Um, yeah, should we leave her to it? We should. Good luck. I'll start cooking with her. <laughs> Good luck. For the sauce of the brownie, I definitely think that honey will add that extra bit of sweetness and just a different flavor profile. So I'm definitely going to use the honey in that component. OK, so Jay's bringing it on with his brownies. So <laughs> battle of the brownies today, boys. Everything's going well so far. I've got my brownie out of the oven. I'm just doing the syrup that's going to drench it and make it the malva component. I'm really excited about this white chocolate and peppermint crisp mousse. That's where the SA element is coming in. So you know what? I mean, while we're at it, why don't I just make some chocolate spoons to eat the caviar with? I mean, we have five hours. I've never made Sam. <laughs> You've never made Sam? No. No, I just don't. Guys, I like to eat nice things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Istanbul is a nice thing. Please. It's not my nice. It's a nice thing. That's what my mom makes for me. Contestants, two hours down, three hours remaining. Woo! Most polikis are something that I make so often at home. It's very simple. It's basically a, a simple bread dough that is enriched with grape juice, with milk, with water. It's delicious. My most poliki dough is rising, so I'm happy with that. 
Um, as soon as I'm done with the sauce, I'm going to start working on my savory components. I've added charcoal to my air bread so it can have like a different look. Tell me about this air bread. So basically you cut it up with pasta roller mm -hmm. and get like super, super thin slices. When you cut it, it puffs up and then it gets like a hollow center. I actually like it a lot because we do a black bread and in Russia they use um, also the charcoal powder mm -hmm. and as well as coriander seeds oh. in the bread, which is quite interesting, yeah. The air bread has baked beautifully. I can hear they hollow in the center, just ready to put that bechamel inside. So this is my beetroot compote. I've got beetroot, onions, apple, capers, red wine, cranberry jelly. And then this is the start of my chakalaka for the pop tart. I like the use of the uh, capers in there and the cranberries because it's uh, that sweet and salty. It goes very, very well and they use it together a lot. Yeah. So I'm very well impressed with that. That's Thank nice. You. While I was busy on the tablets, I came across this really interesting Russian cheesecake recipe, and I think I'm going to go for it. I don't need a base with this one. I'm just making Russian cheesecake cake pops. Well, you're not, you're not running around as no, no. swiftly as you usually are. Yeah. So it feels very calm here today. For now. For now. <laughs> for now. <laughs> so I just realized that I crack whole eggs into my mix instead of just the egg yolks. So yeah, I need to start that over because it's not gonna work. Nothing is going according to plan. When things start going the other direction, listen, you must also just be like, yeah, let's go this direction, it's fine. So I'm doing a take on a milk tart today. So instead of having a traditional milk tart, I'm making crepes. For my milk tart component, I'm thinking of doing the nice bling chick rolls that Michelle did this morning. And I know to achieve that, you really need to get a nice, thin, fluffy crepe. So that's what I went to achieve today. And I start on my first crepe, and what a disaster. So I throw it out, get started on my second one. Second one, just as bad, if not worse. I found this other really interesting idea. Oh my word, today's like turning out to be my day. A traditional Russian marshmallow called a zephyr cake. Who would have thought? It's exactly like a marshmallow, very similar consistency, maybe just a little bit denser. And for my twist, I'm adding coconut. I've risen above all the challenges that have been thrown my way, and today is going to be no exception. I'm going to motor down and I'm going to get these pancakes right. Major stress going on, but I'm glad it's coming along. And my goodness, they are looking perfect. Contestants, we are three hours in with only two hours remaining. A reminder that after the time is finished, you need to have all your bakes packed away and ready to head off to Hazendal. For my spinach and salmon roulade, it's actually an inspired dish by my mentor. And I'm quickly baking the spinach roulade. I'm just slightly worried about how I'm going to roll it, but yeah. I is it going to come off the paper? Did you spray the paper? I didn't spray the paper. Oh, okay. So yeah, that is the stress right now. <sighs> Taking off this roulade off the paper, is a nightmare. I've got my spinach sheets off the paper. Once that's cooled, I'm gonna layer on my creme fraiche, layer on my salmon, roll that up, and then set it in the fridge. I won't lie, I'm struggling today. I'm frazzled, uh, emotions are running high. We absolutely need you to dig deeper than oh, you've ever done you before. You got this. It's okay. It's okay, you got this. It's the last, last hurdle. I don't know, like, I just, I'm just not in the, the right headspace. I've never wanted anything more in my life, so I just feel like I have a lot of weight on my shoulders. What, what we're looking at looks amazing, Jay, and I think you've always been somebody who's really hard on yourself throughout the competition, but you always rise to the occasion, and you're gonna do that again today. I've still got that fire in me, and I'm gonna push. So I'm just gonna wipe my tears and carry on. <laughs> Okay, guys, one more hour of cooking left. You are in the top three for a reason. You can absolutely do this. Come on, Come on. everybody, you can do it! For the last hour! We all know vodka, caviar, salmon, Russia, so I'm doing a salmon mousse. It's gonna be really cool, really light, aerating it with a bit of cream cheese, some lemon, salt, pepper, garlic. I just, I just want it to be this real explosion in the mouth. Cakes are cooling, everything ready to go. Uh, no, not everything. Listen, I don't even have my desserts finished. Now I need to get onto my mkomboti tart. My pastry cream, I'm going to use mkomboti instead of milk. 
The vanilla plays on how some people drink umkomboti with ice cream or umkomboti with amarula. So that's where the inspiration came from. And so I'm gonna go with that sort of flavor combination and that's what we're doing. In our bakery, we centralize our production and then distribute from there to our different stores. You obviously haven't done a travel test, but do you oh. feel quite confident um, that everything should arrive? In yes, good order? So I think so. For when, I, when I designed my menu, I actually took that into account. That's so, a great um, idea. AKA no ice creams, no sorbets. Right. And you have, do you have a strategy of how you're going to pack your stuff so that you make sure it doesn't get damaged? Or... No. No? <laughs> Not yet. Oh, okay. Will... Cool. We'll leave that for the last 30 minutes, shall we? Uh, maybe make it 10. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's so crazy in the last half an hour. I'm just like running back and forth to the shelves and just grabbing things. I don't even know if I need them. I'm just like jamming them into my boxes. Is there going to be enough space? Do we have to like take these boxes with our lids? I mean, I don't know. Jay, how's it going? It's going uh, OK. It's um, a bit manic at the end, trying to get everything packed. I keep looking at this cooler box, thinking about having to also pack it. And I think that's what's really making my mind just go out of control. The plan is just to never stop. <laughs> like, just keep taking things off. Like, OK, done, 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 done. I forgot that we needed to pack our own things. I want to cry, but also, I just need to keep going, man. I've gotten this far. I've gotten so many elements done. Just keep pushing. 10, <laughs> nine, eight. I just packed whatever I could find, whatever was in reach. I threw it in boxes. I don't even know if I packed them correctly. Three, two, two one. one. Close it up and step away from your boxes. Woo! Well done, guys. Well done, guys. Excellent effort. Excellent. Right, guys, now that your boxes are packed, it's time to head to Hazendal. Up next, the contestants prepare for the final showdown. Who will present the best high tea? Hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Located on the outskirts of Stellenbosch, the iconic Hazendal Wine Estate is where our taste master will be crowned. Tando, Kyle and Jay prepare for the final stretch. I'm hoping and praying that I packed everything because if I didn't, it's game over. I've got everything and more. The only thing I didn't pack was that Samsung gas cooker. <laughs> it is so, so beautiful is even like an understatement. I'm so excited that we're gonna be cooking here. Like, ooh, I feel bougie. Welcome to Hazendal Wine Estate. With its rich Cape Dutch history, South African influence and Russian flair, this truly is a global experience. Now that you've completed all the preparation for your South African inspired Russian high tea, you will be given a further 90 minutes to assemble and put the final touches on your bags. In the avant-garde restaurant, you will be serving high tea not only to us judges, but seated at the second table will be your fellow nine other contestants. Oh. <laughs> they will be tasting your bakes, and together their combined average score will contribute to the final result. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> your time starts in three, three two, one, get plating. Good luck. I'm in go mode. I know that I have no time to make anything new, so I'm going to stick to my five components and make sure that they are epic. First thing I hop onto is my mkombo tin amarula tarts. I need to fill my pastry shells, make my ganache, and have that set for a little bit before we present. Everything's going really well. It's just to get my desserts done in the next like five, 10 minutes. Working with my cheesecake lollies, it's like they get soft and pliable when I work with my hands because of the heat of my hands. So I need to figure out ways of keeping them perfect. Very, very tense right now. Just, I think we're all just really worried about time. I start on my pine nut tamalechi. Tamalechis are like, um, it's like a candy. So I work on that because I know that they're going to be looking for some kind of textural component. For my honey cake, I'm gonna make a mascarpone buttercream that's gonna go in between each and every layer. And then I'm thinking of adding a rooibos butterscotch. 
I'm currently just glazing my most poly keys. I want them to have a nice shine on the plate. So I'm just pushing against the clock. It's very frantic and very intense. I know that I deserve to be in this finale. So I am pushing hard. I kick into fifth gear and I know exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm concerned about some of the elements that I didn't actually get to make and that I need to use some of this time to make. 45 minutes to go, I've just finished my beetroot soup and now I'm doing my Russian style beetroot and potato salad. I can't mix them all together straight away because then the color destroys. So what I've got to do is assemble it last minute. Time is ticking. I make a quick date puree, literally just dates and water blitzed up and then I work on a nice chocolate ganache mousse. I don't even know what's happening to my rhubarb spider scotch. It's literally just splitting. I've never seen anything act the way it's acting. But I pour it into my Thermomix and hoping to blitz it up and get it back to its uniform structure. And it's the Thermomix TM6 that comes to my rescue. Winning the competition would mean the world to me. It would make me feel like I'm finally validated in a space and that I actually fit into a space because growing up in the hood and then going to Model C schools, you never really fit in anywhere. It's like you're not bougie enough or you're not hood enough. So there's that confusion and it's just like you feel out of place. So here, food for me has always been a place where I feel like I'm at home. And so just being validated in a space where I'm like, I want to be here would mean the world to me. Jay? Hi, Fritz. And how are you doing? After we finished baking, I felt a little unsettled. I'm not confident in what I prepared. But you know what? Looking at everything in front of me here, I think you're in for a treat today. Wow, that makes me extremely excited. Thank you so much. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, Fritz. Winning the Taste Master South Africa would be a dream come true. I've worked hard in my career as a baker. I'm self-taught. I've put everything into this. And so winning would really be the validation that I need to just put a stamp of approval to say that, yes, this is the right path for you. And this will really just be a way to show that what I've been doing has been worth it. I'm crumbing and coating my arancini before I fry them. I need to make my garlic aioli for my arancini that I left for the hour and a half, so stresses. Kyle, what up, Fritz? Final stages, how are you feeling, brother? Oh, I do, I'm very stressed. Not enough time. I don't think I'm gonna get one of my elements done. In the heat of the moment, Fritz is coming over to talk to me. I don't have time to speak. I need to be nice. I don't know what to do. I don't wanna get into it too much, but all the best, Kyle, okay? Keep strong. To go all the way and win this competition, I would be so happy. I mean, it would really prove to myself more than anything that I have the ability and I have the technical skill. Yeah, it would just be really, really cool on all sides to win. It just make me very happy. Contestants, we are entering the final 15 minutes of biking in this year's Tice Master competition. We have very little time left, and the boys have already started plating, and I am in a panic. Ah, uh, not OK. Not OK? No. I just have lots to do. I, I don't think I'm going to have time to make sure everything is as pretty as I want it to be. I don't have space. Here you go. I have no counter space. I'm like plating everywhere. It is a whole movie. <sighs> I'm not gonna finish. I'm literally beyond spinning. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time is up. Everybody step away from your plating. a loss for it. I can't believe I just pulled this off. Yeah. That was intense. Reuniting for one last Tastemaster experience, each of the nine eliminated contestants returned to add their voices. I'm so excited that the other contestants are going to try our food. Who doesn't love to feed their friends and family? And I feel like the contestants have sort of become that. I am so excited. Forget the judging. It would be just so nice to have our big family back together. Up next, it's time for the whole family to taste. Whose high tea catches your eye? Let us know using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. 
rise to the top and be crowned the Tastemaster SA. Bake more memories with tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder. The scene is set with three impressive tables, each representing a unique take on the Russian high tea theme. Who will most impress the judges with their presentation? Tandu Manjoni, Jay Miller, or Kyle Haytred? In today's judging, the tables will be turned slightly. Besides our three votes, your fellow contestants will also have one combined vote in today's decision. So before we get tasting your beautiful creations, from all of us, a huge congratulations to all of you for making it across the finish line. We are so proud of you, and you have all done an amazing job. <laughs> and on that note, Tando, you're up first. Please talk us through your Russian-inspired creations. Today, I took lots of inspiration from the presentation we got, and I've infused it with a lot of South African flavors. So I've got a beetroot air bread, amarula and umkomboti tart, some pulled lamb on sorghum crackers with upelepele sauce. I've got samp croquets with garlic aioli, and I've got some spinach roulade with salmon trout inside there. And then I've also got a honey, orange, and ginger cake. Thank you very much, Tando. We are all very excited to taste. Please do serve up. I wholeheartedly believe in myself. Like, I know I can do it, but I never thought I'm actually going to do it. And that speaks for the competition and now speaks for the high tea that I've managed to present. Like, I know my skill level and I know how I think and I know that I'm capable of so many things, but to actually be applying myself every day, mentally and physically, I'm just so proud of myself. It looks beautiful and abundant. Um, she's definitely used all the ingredients that we've asked for in terms of the challenge, so that looks great. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to taste it all, to see where all the elements that we're looking for is going to come from and surprise us. Mm. I'm low-key grateful that the judges aren't giving any feedback because I'm so exhausted. I'm like, I don't know if I have the heart to hear it. But at the same time, Especially for some of my elements, the new stuff, I kind of want to hear what they have to say, like, did it work, did it not? Judges, we're off to a very strong start. I know Tando for very bold flavours, and you can pick that up with that little cracker that you did with that spicy, beautiful meat, but the rest of the stuff is extremely elegant, mm. beautiful, tasty and well-balanced. I absolutely agree. I think it's a beautiful plate. I love the colours coming through. You could see she really thought about it, but also bringing her own touch to the plate, which I think is very special. And that's what we're looking for at the end of the day. For me, this plate is very familiar because there are a lot of flavors that I grew up eating and I recognize, but in such a different way. And that's what we want. We want to be wowed, but also to feel kind of comfortable in the plate. And she's done that so beautifully. She can be proud of this plate. The highlight of the station is this beautiful tart for me. The short crust pastry is perfect and the umkombuti filling is absolutely insane. The hero on this plate for me is the tart. It's a flavor that I'm not familiar with, but it's a dish that I'm very familiar with. So taking a bite into that was really exciting. It's really something new. After some positive feedback for Tando from both the judges and contestants, it's Jay's final chance to impress with his high tea offering. Today, I've done a spin on five things that will happily find their place on my family's table at any given moment. So I've got my Malva-inspired brownie, my milk tart bling chicks, I've got a pup tart key, my most poly key with a beetroot compote, and a little cheese cracker with some salmon mousse. So enjoy. I feel really proud of myself. I pushed through the emotions. I pushed through everything that I was going through and I delivered something. And I know that it's not over until the judges have tasted and scored. Well, I'm super excited about this Mors Poliki. It looks absolutely beautiful. And a Malfa brownie, super. I think it's a family favorite of ours as well. <laughs> and in true Russian opulence, some gold I see on the plate as well. Oh, and in true Jay style, a bit of bling. <laughs> never believed that I could find success in baking, but through this whole experience, I've learned that in life, if you put 100% into something, if you believe in something, you follow your dreams, and you can land up in the Taste Master final, <laughs> and that feels great. 
I really enjoyed the journey that Jay took me on with this plate. Some of the flavors very familiar, some very interesting and new. Wow, that Malva brownie, <laughs> yum, yum. <laughs> the flavors are very deep, very intricate, and Jay's touch on these classics really elevated this experience for me and made it very, very special. I really like the fact that he brought his own style and his own vibe to the plate. It was like eating at his family's house, I think, with flavours that they would have at their tea table or lunch table. So I think that was really, really well done. Everything is flavoured well and um, Lucy really thought about what he was doing. Mm. The pop chakalaka tart, that is something new. So the way his brain works, <laughs> It's just amazing. Uh, it's going to be a close one. I'm always blown away by Jay's creativity. Yeah, well done to all the, the guys. I'm sure that it's going to be a tough one. With spectacular displays from both Tundo and Jay, the pressure is on for Kyle, who's the final contestant to present his high tea to the judges. So for today's Russian inspired tea, I've made a chocolate brownie with a milk tart cremeau. I've made uh, Russian zephyr cakes with honey and coconut, and then a Russian-inspired uh, cheesecake pop with amarillo, and then a peppermint crisp and white chocolate mousse with raspberry pearls, caviar. And then for my savory component, I've done a traditional beetroot uh, soup, and then a beetroot and potato salad with fresh capers, and uh, lastly, a trout mousse with uh, salmon gravid lax and crispy skins. I'm really happy with what I did and my ideas because the colours, the shapes, they kind of match the tablecloth that I've been given, the crockery that I've been allowed to use. So today's working for me so far. Oh my word, this is quite a spread, guys. <laughs> this is like a, a proper tea experience with many, many elements. I'm very happy to see a beetroot soup, the salad. There's a lot of elements that were taken, obviously, from the brief that I just off the bat see uh, straight away. So I'm very excited to taste all of this and get all the flavors going. Mm. In true Kyle style, mm. abundance at its best. Um, I think that this was a challenge that he was very comfortable in because he could do everything and we weren't going to tell him to lessen the amount. And he just got it done, <laughs> just in the last moments, but he stuck to his guns and he stuck to his character. I'm really hoping that they get the flow of the balance, which I was trying to create and the cohesion between my savory and my sweets. I'm also hoping they enjoy my pops of color and just my wide variety of spread. Every element is very well thought out, perfectly seasoned from the potato salad to the trout, the lightness in the beetroot, this sort of South African experience in this sweet plate as well. Yeah, I'm sure he's patting himself on the back for this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can be proud of himself, he really can. This was definitely well thought through, well executed. Mm. Um, yeah, and definitely not a small task. Kyle's dishes really did it for me. I think that he had so much attention to detail. He really expressed what the challenge was about. And I think that every single thing that he brought out today showed high tea. The items that Kyle put forward, it's a wide variety and he definitely showed a lot of skill and technique. I am conflicted, in fact, between all three, but I, I am more on the savory side. So I'm leaning towards Tando. It's tough, but I definitely see a clear winner. I love that everybody did their best work today. The top three really showed us why they are in the final. Mm. And it's going to be a difficult decision, but I'm glad. I'm glad it's going to be tough to decide who takes it. Yeah. Decision time. Yeah. It's been one crazy journey. Many ups, many downs, it's all culminating at this particular point in time. I've definitely grown both as a person and as a baker. And I think that's just the beauty of this whole experience. Whether I win or lose, I've won in my own eyes. I'm just ready to hear what the judges have to say and whew, it's been a long journey. Up next, Who's your favorite to win? Let us know using hashtag the Tastemaster SA. Right here on the estate, after weeks of challenging bakes, triumphs and tears, one of these finalists, Tando, Jay or Kyle, will be crowned the Tastemaster SA. Having everyone together for this last moment is so special and I couldn't ask for a better setting for this finale. 
Kyle, Jay, Tando, you should all be extremely proud of your final bake today and all the efforts you put in, which quite frankly was fit for a Russian Tsar. Kyle, that beautifully delicate borscht. Jay, that chocolate brownie Malfa inspiration, oh my word. And girl, that Amarula Umkamboti tart. Just wow, that's all I will say. Well done. Well done, guys. Before we announce the winner of the Taste Master, first a special thank you to our wonderful sponsors, Le Creuset. The winner will be walking away with a 15,000 Rand Le Creuset voucher. Then also a special thank you to Thermomix. The winner today will be walking away with a brand new Thermomix TM6. And of course, Samsung, who's been absolutely amazing. Today we have Chief Marketing Officer Dudu Mokulu to share a few words with you. Thank you, Dudu. Hello, everyone. On behalf of Samsung, I'd just like to say congratulations. This was a great show. You guys were absolutely amazing. Thank you for putting our products through the paces. We really loved seeing you bring our products to life. Congratulations and good luck for the future. Thank you, Didi. Thank you. And of course, finally, our headline sponsor, a very big thank you to Royal Baking Powder. And not here in person, but our representative, Marli Fisaghi has sent a special message for you guys. Throughout the competition, as contestants baked more memories, tried and trusted Royal Baking Powder was on hand to help them rise to the occasion. I want to congratulate each and every one of the contestants for taking this amazing leap of faith and entering this wonderful competition with Royal Baking Powder. It's been absolutely inspiring hearing those beautiful stories about the baking memories that you've had with your mother, your grandmother for generations in the kitchen. And it's great to hear that Royal Baking Powder was part of all those memories for so many years. It's been absolutely amazing watching your journey through Taste Masters, week on week, improving, learning new skills, and just wowing us with your creations. To the top three, congratulations. I wish you could all win, but I know this is the start of amazing foodie journeys for all of you. Marley, thank you, Marley. And to add to that, Royal Baking Powder has felt that the competition standard has been so high that they have decided that the winner will receive from them an additional 20,000 Rand cash. <laughs> Today I felt like you all came to your pinnacle. Kyle, I felt like your skills and experience gave you an edge today and you use that to your full potential. Well done. Jay is always so much content. That little pop tart, chakalaka. But that panakuk had a depth of flavor that moved me. Tando, oh my word. Your tart, as Michelle correctly celebrated, was beyond excellent and sent this guy to heaven. Well done, guys. Proud of you. What amazing talent you guys have shown. Tando, your tenacity and your will to fight throughout the competition has been beautiful to watch. Your growth is incredible. You are an incredible baker. Continue to soar. Jay, oh, the stories you tell through your food are absolutely magical. Never stop telling your heritage story. Thank you for sharing that with us. Kyle, your experience shone. The fact that you are brave enough to put everything that you want on a plate is a quality that you should hold on to. Thank you to all of you. You've been wonderful. And now it is my absolute privilege to announce the winner of Tastemaster SA Baking Edition and the winner of the final Royal Baking Powder Mastery Pin. The winner is...
The winner is... Kyle. I've won this challenge. I've won the competition. I won Tastemaster Baking Edition. This is amazing. There's been so many ups and downs, times where I thought I was going home, but um, here I am, first place. Woo! Ah, <laughs> you know what? Right until the end, I thought that I had it, but I knew that Kyle was just gonna smash it today. He deserves it 1,000%. Congrats, Kyle. Well done to everybody, especially to Jay and Tandu. Like, they really, really worked their hearts out today. So, really well done to them and the rest of the team. I mean, everybody just had so much fun. Everybody's got strengths and weaknesses and their, and their fortes. And just, it just was, it was wonderful. Wonderful experience. Another feel-good production.